going into this week and, and just home stretch here, knowing that there's uh, certainly some winnable games left on the table. Where, where are you guys kind of at? We're in a great place. Um, everybody's back. Everybody's healthy. Um, been nice to have some consistency in practices. Um, you know, obviously it was nice to play the other night, um, you know, tough finish, but you know, it's it great to be back out there and competing and obviously did a lot of good things for a long time. And, and so a game to build upon for us, um, you know, just as we get back into things. And, um, so the last couple of days have been great and, uh, we're excited for, uh, more games ahead, hopefully. Rotationally with, uh, with Taylor playing so many minutes there at the five, has it crossed the mind late in the year here that when she's off the floor to, to just go as small as can be one through five there just to get her some minutes off or, or are you comfortable with her playing, you know, that, that 33 to 36 range that, that she's been. Well, I mean, I think you just got to put whatever's best for your team on the floor at the, at the time, you know, the other night, she's obviously a great matchup for us um, pretty much every night, you know, and uh, she got picked up that first foul, um, but then did a great job not picking up another in the first half, you know, ended up fouling out, but uh, it was late after lots of minutes. And I thought, you know, that matchup was, was best for her. And then, you know, that's the versatility of the team. I mean, some nights uh, are great for Yelena, some nights, it's nice to put Ellie in there and, and go small. And certainly, you know, we have Giovanna as well. And so um, versatility and situational, uh, you know, for us. And so whatever's best, um, you know, we'll do. I mean, I think you can think back to our Colorado game. Yelena was a, a great matchup for us um, in that game. And so in the Colorado game, even, even though I could have gone back with Taylor at one time, you know, we just rolled with what was working best for us at the time, you know, and so it's kind of, I don't know, coaching by feel, but mostly coaching just by circumstance, I think. Uh, Scott, what do you make of uh, USC, a team you haven't uh, faced this season, but a team that's, uh, I think, four out of five uh, as of late? Yeah, a good team. You know, I mean, Peely, they, they missed Peely early in the season and have her back now. And so, you know, you got the, the uh, reigning freshman of the year, you know, joined back up such a versatile talented player he's such a unique player um you know she's just fun to watch um I wouldn't want to guard her but she's fun to watch you know she's just a handful in the post and can certainly step out and that's that's made them deeper um you know they're a fairly young team um and you know so they're growing and and um have played well of late as you mentioned and and so no surprise um you know, Rogers is just a dynamic point guard. They've got size inside. They've got capable shooters on the perimeter and which have, they've been shooting the ball very well. So it doesn't surprise me, you know, that they've found ways to win. And so, um, you know, Pac-12, tough games every night. Scott, where do you feel like you guys are at in terms of the um, NCAA tournament conversation? Uh, do you feel like you need just peel off a bunch of wins to get in, or would you have to win the Pac-12 tournament, or wh which is, where do you feel like you're at at this point? Well, I think we're – I mean, every, everything I've, people have told me we're bubble. You know, you look at the net rating, I think we're 51 or something like that. Um, I think we're as high as 45 or something, and I, I'm still learning the net, um, you know, because you, you – playing Stanford obviously helped our strength of schedule yet we dropped <clears throat> so I realize it's a loss but usually you know in the RPI strength of schedule was so vital um, and so we we jumped way up with two road wins you know against Colorado Utah um, and so I'm still yeah I think we're all still adapting to kind of just how it all plays out and make sense of it so um, my answer to that is typically year in and year out well, if you win, you don't have to worry about it, you know, just win. And, and so that's where our focus is right now. I mean, you could take nothing for granted. You can't, uh, we, we need to win games, um, bottom line, and then take it out of people's hands, you know, and, and, and that's been my philosophy forever. And so um, I don't want to be, you know, a bubble team. I want this team to be able to, to compete, earn a spot like we've done for so many years now. And so it's been difficult, of course, um, you know, been dealt a tough hand uh, for a young team trying to gain some consistency and grow as a team um, with the disruptions that we've had. So we've had to battle through that adversity, but here, if we can 
you know, get into these next three weeks and have consistency and a schedule we can count on and remain, you know, um, able to play um, and our opponents as well. We've got an opportunity for, you know, two games this weekend, probably a makeup game next week at some point that has not been determined yet, but probably um, then Oregon and then roll into the Pac-12 tournament where obviously we're guaranteed one, um, probably guaranteed another makeup game down there. Uh, and then obviously if we can win down there, you got opportunity to play four, you know, so that's certainly going to, t- would make us eligible, um, number of games wise. And then if you look at the teams on our schedule, uh, USC is a bubble team right now as well. Um, just a couple spots below us in the net, uh, UCLA is highly rated. Um, the game that would be rescheduled would be one that I, I would believe help us. Oregon um, is a highly rated team in the net that would help us, you know, and then the Pac-12 tournament certainly, you know, would give us opportunities as well. So, so I think we're in a position where we could play our way in, um, we could win. And that's what we've been hoping for the opportunity to do. Uh, You know, so I I think there's, there's lots of basketball left and, you know, we have a great opportunity in front of us right now especially with USC being a road team, you know, that, that game turns into a a quad one game instead of a quad two that, you know, they would be if you were at home. I mean, I know it's three road games against three very tough teams to end off things here in the regular season, but is that almost beneficial for you guys for positioning that you add that game and that's a potential quad one win that puts you in better position? No, no question. No question. So um, we've learned that. I mean, obviously, you know, road games are, are rewarded in a big way in the net and, and road victories, especially. And so, um, yeah, like I said, great opportunities in front of us. Scott, earlier this week, um, Mick Cronin at UCLA said that they haven't had a team meal since the kids came back to school. And I've just got to thinking, how, what are the challenges have been in building team chemistry? And if, if they've been a big challenge, how, in what ways does it impact play? Well, that's an, that's a loaded question for us. And uh, what, what he mentioned is, is true of us as well. Uh, Most meals are take and go, grab and go, you know, pre-packaged, no more buffets, no more sit around, you know, conversate, that type of thing. It's um, the hotels that we've been to have, you know, have rules. They don't allow you to do that. And so everything's just so much isolation. For our program, um, I mean, that's that's my number one priority in this is taking care of everyone and building community for our players, for our staff and for our fans and just creating this, you know, we say the word every day, family. And that's what it is. And that, that we say it because it is the number one priority in what we're doing. And I believe that creates the best experience for our students. It does lead to success on the court, no question, because it leads to um, feeling awesome about where you are and, it, and it, it bonds you together, all these shared experiences. And so I am, <laughs> that's what I've built my career on is shared experiences and doing amazing things um, together for others, outward focused, um, and then also just enjoying the results of a tight knit team that may, can sustain any kind of adversity. So this group is that the experiences they have have had this year or we've been able to provide for them pale in comparison to every other year I've ever been a part of. Nobody in Gill, no tip off dinner, um, not even hosting a recruit where those are just awesome bonding experiences that that we have together. Um, You know, we were able to do our team retreat this year, which I was so grateful for. But that's the one thing that we've been able to do, Um, you know, even our own rules where you know, you can't really have the team over um, and, and different things like that because of testing and not, a, I mean, it's just been an absolute circus when it comes to putting a team and building a tight knit community. Well, for us, when the reason I say it's loaded is that our students come here for that. They are people that value that very thing and families that value that very thing the most. And most of those things have been stripped away from us this year. So the experience is, um, Uh, it's basketball. We have a blast together every day, but taking it beyond that um, has been, and which is what my favorite part of our program is, hasn't been allowed 
And so it's been really, really hard, you know? And so I just give this team a ton of credit. Um, people coming from all over the world, being on this campus, the campus isn't normal, no campus is. Um, to keep a positive outlook and to take care of each other like they, they have is, is almost super, I mean, just, I don't know what you say. It, it's, it's been a miracle, honestly, how it's happened and how tight they've stayed. Um, especially through the disruptions we've had. So yeah, that's a, that's a hard, I, I, I hate it, honestly. Coach, when you look at the schedule this season, only two weeks until the Pac-12 tournament, is it hard to believe that it's kind of already here or was there any moment where you honestly weren't sure if it was going to happen, especially when you had those pauses? Well, I, I, I can't say that I ever thought, you know, we were going to be done or something like that. Um, I knew everything was, you know, our medical staff says, okay, this is going to end about here and this, you know, but anytime one of those names pops up on your phone, you're like, oh no, here's another call from, you know, some medical, ah, you know, and, and we celebrated Jason, our, our trainer, Jason Lou's birthday yesterday. And, you know, Jason's been here 12 years, <clears throat> the only person that's been here longer than me now in our program. And, and uh, I just look at him and I'm like, my gosh, everything he's done for us this year. And it's like, he's done two different jobs doing all the COVID protocol, all our athletic trainers have tr the COVID protocol, let alone just the normal stuff that it's already a full-time job. It's been incredible, you know? So, but through their job, they say, okay, this is about when you're going to come back if things go well. And, and so I've never given, we've never been at a point where there wasn't hope, I should say. Um, you know, the fact that we had senior night the other day <clears throat> in our sixth home game, I think, or something like that um, was like the weirdest thing ever on uh, no fans, no families, you know, we're honoring our scene. It was, you know, what are we doing? And so um, anyway, so yeah, there's, it, it has gone extremely fast. It's hard to believe it's right here. And it does put a, a massive sense of urgency on this moment. Going off of that, there's kind of been this mindset, I guess, this year that it's going to get better. This isn't normal. Is that something that you've told your players and your team to just kind of keep the mojo, keep the spirits high? Because um, it is eventually going to get better. Life typically does, right? Um, yeah, I think we're all just conditioned. You know, you get sick, well, you're going to get better. You, you get a cut on your hand, well, you know it's going to heal. Um, something bad happens, well, it's only temporary. It's going to get better. I mean, that's just life. And so I think um, we all are very hopeful of that. And so we've also talked about the fact that, man, this might be our last game. Who knows what's going to happen? I mean, they could shut down um, basketball. The NCAA could shut down basketball. The, who knows the government could make a decision and, and we could get shut down at any moment. So we've learned from the beginning, we've said this from the beginning, let's play like this is our last game because it actually might be you know, our last game, who knows? Um, at the same time, there's, you know, just the human spirit that it's going to get better. Things are going to be back to normal, you know, and we pray for that day. Uh, we pray for that day to get back to what we love doing and um, impacting lives beyond our team and, and playing the game we love in a environment that is as unique as anything you've ever experienced. You know, that's, that's what this is all about for all of us. And, and so we're hopeful, we're very hopeful. Scott, the, the net being what it is and you guys being six and six, I, I mean, is there, I don't want to say seedings being meaningless this year in the tournament, but like, is, is there going to be some kind of weird shuffling around of, of teams that make it just based on, you know, the, the games played, who's postponed. I, it just seems like this year there's going to be some very wonky situations there. And even in the PAC 12 too, in Vegas, where, you know, by virtue of the fact that you just haven't played that many games, you're going to be put in a weird spot. I mean, is that even something to think about at this point? Beyond our control, you know, right? Beyond our control. And so we just, we have to focus on the next game and winning um, and let that all play out. You know, I think there's really tough decisions to be made. Like you said, how do you, how do you do that? I mean, you're going off win percentages, but yeah, I mean, what about a win percentage against a team that's played twice as many games and they've played half as many? Do they get in the tournament? How do they weigh that? You know, so um, I wouldn't want to be in that situation. Or I wouldn't want to make the, have to make those decisions because they're going to be very tough to make. Um, you know, I, you just got to trust that the people in charge are doing their due diligence and giving everybody a fair shot and seeing who are the best teams right now at this point of the year and give those teams the shot at it. 
and put together a, a fair and equitable tournament. That's all we could ever ask, you know, whether it's conference or, or NCAA. And so, yeah, so we're, you know, we're at their mercy in a way, but at the same time, I mean, we got, we got to take care of business. Shooting from three extraordinarily well over uh, the last four or five games. What, what do you attribute the confidence to? And is, is that kind of thing just sort of easily transferable when you go on the road? I think a big part of it is we're just kind of getting used to playing together. This is only what, like 12 games maybe we've played. And so as we kind of, you know, kind of get to know each other a little better, we can find each other when we're open and we just have confidence when we pass the ball and when we shoot. Um, and yeah, I think that translates to on the road pretty well. Ellie, as we get approaching to the conference tournament, how excited are you to kind of be in a new format going from the Patriot League to now the Pac-12? Uh, it's definitely different in terms of like when we play and that we're all in one place. Um, but at the same time, we need to win games. And so it's really similar to being in the mid-major. Um, so I'm kind of built for this. This is what, you know, I'm used to the last three years. Um, and I'm just really excited to continue playing. You guys are on the road for uh, for the next three. You know your your tournament uh, hopes, I guess, are kind of in in your control and destiny's in your own hands here, so to speak. Uh, what has the message been, if any, from Scott just about what this road trip to end the month is going to mean and what that could also mean for for March in Vegas and beyond? It's winning time. Uh, we all know that uh, our fate is in a, is in our own hands. Um, and it's time we kind of take control of that. I think we've done a lot of growing and I think we're going to continue to grow from that Stanford loss. And, uh, you know, hopefully we continue to show that um, in these last three regular season games and then uh, in the in the tournament. When, when you guys are going small, uh, there, you know, there are a couple moments in the Stanford game where it looked like, you know, you decided to, to go that way. I mean, are you used to playing the four or even the five, you know, in, in those spots? Uh, the five, I played a little bit of last year, but really the tallest girls that I was going up against were probably my height, maybe an inch or two taller. But now it's, you know, guarding six, five, six, six, who, you know, weigh a lot more than me. So that's definitely a challenge. But I think there's probably some positives to that, too. Just my ability to shoot, stretch the floor on offense. And uh, I probably have a little bit of a quickness advantage when I'm playing the five, too. So it's something that I've actually really enjoyed and really enjoyed the challenge. Um, and, you know, just trying to live up to what we need and, and just help our help our team out. Ellie, how have you taken your past experiences kind of with that mid-major mindset and brought it to the team, especially when it comes to kind of teaching and showing the younger girls what college basketball is all about? Yeah, I mean, the Pac-12 is very different um, from experiences that I've had in the past, but uh, basketball is basketball. And so everyone's a little bit quicker and faster and stronger here, but I think, you know, I, I just have a feel for good basketball and, and hopefully I kind of bring that to our team. And then now in March, it's win or go home and anything's possible. Um, I've experienced that in my career and we're kind of in the situation where we need to make things happen now. And I've been in that situation before. So I think that this is what I'm built for and what our team is built for.